Hello, my name is Isaiah, and in this video I'm going to talk about Boost 3.0 and how it affects the Pascal GPU for overclocking. So, for overclocking the Pascal GPU, which involves the 1070, the 1080, the 1080 Ti, the Titan, the 1060, all the cards that are kind of in that series of or family of video cards are all going to have the same similar parameters. This video focuses on the 1080 Ti because it's pretty much the biggest GPU you're going to come across. It has a little bit different parameters than the last video I did about the 1070. So the big things you need to know about any of these cards for, for overclocking is to boost 3.0. This is what Nvidia has implemented by themselves and uh, nothing we can do about it is pretty much locked down as far as uh, the controls we have on it. So for starters there is a limit of voltage. The voltage core limit is 1.093 so no video card can pass this without having to add modifications, hard modifications. It's pretty much the only way around this. Second up is the power limit which most cards go to 120% which is about 300 watts total that it could take for the video card or pull for the video card. Some of the higher end custom cards can do 130% which is about 330 watts is probably the highest I've seen as far as uh, draw power goes. And last is the temperature limit and th what this is limited to is 90 Celsius. So if I were to run a benchmark, say I'm going to run heaven in a loop, you can see that the boost clock which is basically the set number that Nvidia has set parameters for is going between 620 and 750. This is going up and down up and down and this is based on what the temperature is, what the power limit is, and what the voltage is. So if I were to raise the power limit, since the card is not actually hitting 100% anyways, it's going to make zero difference. It's just going to let you, you know, a little bit more of a swing. But in the end, just raising the power limit is not going to cause any major differences. If I were to raise just the temperature limit, because now my limit is 90 Celsius, it has more wiggle room to go back and forth. So the, the boost clock is already already a little bit higher because now I have more of uh, the thermal throttling doesn't kick in until farther on. At 90 Celsius if I left it for quite a while because that is the thermal throttling point it may down clock but that usually after a while. Now most people don't want to run their video card at 90 Celsius to get the extra boost on it. They want the best uh, performance to parameters. So those are the two keys right there. Um, the last one is core voltage which I found that it doesn't really make a difference until you get to the very end of your overclocking like the very very last few megahertz. Some people have reported that actually you lose performance by raising it to the limit. Other people say the gain performance just depends on your video card and your system and all that. So uh, by default is set to 1.063 or 64. It's not a huge jump to the maximum voltage because these GPUs are very sensitive as far as voltage goes. That's not going to be a huge factor until you get to the end. So if I, like I said, were to raise either of those power limits or temperature limits, you see it different result. If I were to raise the span speed so the GPU gets cooled faster, you'll see the boost clock stays a lot higher just because it's able to cool the GPU. So when you see those big um, custom GPUs or a video card under underwater cooling, the reason why they have a higher, say, out-of-box overclock, I should say, is because of how the Boost 3.0 operates and how it sees the card. So it's, it doesn't know that it's a custom card. It just knows that the GPU is not it's getting as hot, so therefore it can have a higher boost clock. It knows that there is might be more power available, so therefore it's allowed to put more of a swing into it for boost. And so to kind of wrap this up, Boost 3.0 is is something that is set for casual consumers. There's no, you don't have to overclock or know anything about overclocking to use the feature. It's built into the video card. But for people that want to overclock, what we can do is basically add on to the top boost number. So whatever the current boost number is, the plus symbol. 10 plus 10 to plus 20 plus 30 or whatever goes on to top the top of that so if your video card out of the box boosts to say 1950 uh, megahertz you add 50 to the core now it's running at 2 gigahertz so this applies to everybody so a lot of times people say well my card doesn't overclock very far i got 25 megahertz out of it well if it's already running at 2 gigahertz you apply 20 megahertz to it that's running at you know 2000 20 megahertz, which is a very substantial overclock based on the original core, which is running like 1500, and the boost is running at 1630, which is the default. So that should wrap up 
kind of like the basics of overclocking as far as uh, Boost 3.0 is concerned and how it affects your video card. Without understanding this part, it's hard to communicate the actual overclocking part. So if I were to, they said, overclock it in any form, this is just adding on to whatever Boost 3.0 permits to do.